Coming up next, we get to this UFC middleweight division fight. well-rounded fighter in this division, a true mixed martial artist at his core, and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup. Tonight. Everyone talked about him being well-rounded. It's unbelievable to watch a guy that can do everything across the board at such a high level. Yeah, he's comfortable wherever the fight goes. Maybe he'll grapple tonight, maybe he'll strike. Makes him a hard guy to prepare for. though how difficult those 50 minutes against Yoel Romero were and what type of toll it might take on Whitaker here moving forward. Yes, but after the Romero fight, there was a lot of time in between fights for Whitaker, which allows you to recover. Because you hear the stories about the guys that say they fight Yoel. No one's like him. No one feels like right. him. But Robert Whitaker was able to manage that over the course of two very, very difficult fights. And he was able to do that because of the fantastic cardio. The great wrestling mentality and also the unbelievable striking and the ability to stare down the barrel of a loaded shotgun in Yoel yeah. Romero's left hand and feel safe. That allowed Robert Whitaker to keep his belt in both of those instances. And we knew from his debut in 2012 that he would be something special. He has certainly been every bit that. Our tale of the tape for this middleweight fight. Both fighters 29 years of age with similar height and some differences in reach. All right, now for the official introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 19 wins, two losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Drake has still not And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 25 wins, six losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, Robert Whitaker! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? You ready? Fight. Well, the tension is palpable as this fight gets underway, and gonna be interesting to see how this matchup plays out. Definite striker on one side against another guy who can really do it all. And in those situations, normally the guy that's more well-rounded will be the one that will find success. I want to see how this plays out. Big ball punch land. Now we get back to range. Superman punch now. Oh, collar tie. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. All right, take your time. Left hand punch from the clinch. Oh, man, this guy kicks like a mule. So hard. He kicks so hard every time you see him drive his shit into his opponent. Nice punch, man. Still on 
on his feet, but he's not up by much. Oh, big left. Oh, straight right. Just over two minutes to go in what has been a furious round one. And they separate. So just over 20 total strikes have now landed for Robert Whitaker. He blocks the punch. 90 seconds to go. Beautiful strike. And now he's got that tight punch. Ooh, now he's got the tie plum, Daniel. If you're on the other side, what are you trying to do to get out of this potentially dangerous position? You gotta start digging your shoulder to a side and trying to shove an underhook. You cannot bend down to try to get out of point tie punch. Hardy closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Oh, and that kick is blocked. So we cross the 30-second mark in our opening round. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if he can follow it up. He's landed that punch over and over again. What's he gonna do to follow up? Whiffs on the straight right hand. All right, so there's the end of the round. Few things in MMA more devastating than a head kick and nearly produced a knockout for him there. We talked to him earlier in the week, and he talked about chances to take the kicks high. He got a chance, he took it, he landed that kick, and almost got the fight finished. Let's see if he can go and do that again. Down, no problem. And he finally is softened enough to that Bobby Knuckles moniker. I mean, they print the shirts. It's a great nickname. I don't know why he fought it. It's a fantastic nickname, and it fits him to a T. Bobby Knuckles, we all love you. We all love that nickname. Whitaker gets caught with that punch. He'd be wise to get those hands up. Well, the right hand has been there at times, not that time. Oh, that's a nice straight punch there. Do the punch, got to the target. Just over three minutes to go in round two. Oh! Beautiful diving strike land. Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. Takedown defense holds up. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Well, hard to win fights in mixed martial arts from the bottom, but nice work here in that position by Robert Whittaker. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. Oh, lands with the ground and pound strike. Arch, a good ground and pound by him here, certainly staying busy, and not just busy, but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off of you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective, to throw damaging strikes. He's doing a fantastic job. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here, and if you're the opponent, you've got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop you. got to defend, but you can see him now start to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes it's starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. 20 seconds left. 
Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these types of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> So there's the horn signifying the end of the round. A stunner there with the head strike midway through. Nearly got him out of there for good. Almost got him out of there. He hurt him badly. He had his opponent hurt real bad. Now his opponent's walking back to his corner. Everybody looks confused. They don't know what they're supposed to do to try to change the way that this fight is going. Are you ready? Are you ready? Third round underway. the takedown, no problem. Oh, just open it up on him now. Head kick, oh, right hand gets up to block it. Well, we wondered earlier why there weren't as many body strikes. He's making up for lost time here. Shot to the body connects, and that bear's watching. That's gonna hurt this opponent. First attempt there is blocked by the opponent. Straight there. I guess that's the quickest way to the target, right? Just throw straight. Straight down is always best. Just misses with the jab. Well, this is exactly the sense of urgency you're looking for. Try to take the judges out of it. He is lighting them up now. Oh, a little single collar tie there. Big punch lands through the middle. And he landed the right hand there. Liver kick. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Well placed with the kick. Nice punch there. And both guys really throwing with authority. Immediately gets the underhook. Whitaker gets the tie clinch here. Oh, that was a DC. He's rocked. That was a beautiful hook. It landed perfectly. And it hurt him to it very bad. Whitaker goes for the clinch here, and this is just a means by which to recover. He is stuck. All right, so the fight goes the distance. We'll take a look back at the action, but should go his way given all he got done in the striking game. Yeah, he did a great job of landing at will, mixing up the target, doing everything that he's become known for in order to cruise to a very good decision. I know he didn't get the finish that he wanted so bad coming in here tonight, but he had a phenomenal performance, and he showed that he's one of the best fighters in the world. All right, the official decision is now in. Here is Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we're going to the judges' score cards for a decision. The judges score the contest 30-27, 9-28, and 30-27. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Robert Whitaker. Well, he did not get the finish that he certainly prioritized when we sat down with him in our fighter meeting, but a win is a win. He gets it done by unanimous decision. And he said he wanted a finish, but sometimes your opponent's not willing to play the game. In those instances, all you can do is control what you can control, and that's fight to the best of your ability. He did exactly that tonight.